All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show with Living Legend here, Coach Dan Monson here, East of Washington Eagles, doing big things out there in Washington. Coach, good to talk to you for the first time on the show, man. Been a fan of yours for years, man. It's an honor to talk to you, Coach. Well, it's great to be on. I mean, you know, I can't talk to you if you don't invite me, so I appreciate the invite, you know, just the – uh, Atlanta's a great spot. I, I I wish I was down there, get a little vacay down there. Yes, sir. Coach, let me ask you, Coach, your career, man, uh, what's been your thoughts about Atlanta players, man, Atlanta, Georgia talent, and be able to recruit those young men and how kind of impact they have on, on programs? Yeah, you know, uh, you have to have an – you kind of – any place you recruit to, it's you got to have kind of a niche, an in, you know. Like I, rem I remember when uh, – when uh, 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 Bozeman was the coach at uh, Cal and Cal had like three or four uh, guys from Atlanta starting, at, you know, 2000 miles away. He had an, he had an in into the, into the area, you know, um, I, I don't know if you remember Todd Bozeman back, I do. back in the day, but uh, it was, you know, and uh, you know, so it, it's kind of where you are. We, we, we had an African kid that came about three years ago to Long Beach state and he had a good experience. And, and next thing you know, we had uh, two more come join because they're the, the people that send them there, uh, they just want kids to be taken care of. They want them to be coached. They want them to, to develop and, and, and get their, their degree and everything. And so if you do somebody right, and all of a sudden you have to have a quote unquote pipeline. And I've, I've always thought that there's been great talent in, 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 uh, in Atlanta, but never really had a, a line to, to those kids. Well, coach, you got one there, coach. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I like it. This is just start sending them. Well, we'll you got one there, them. coach. You got one there, coach. Yeah, yeah. coach. Though know, I feel like I wish we had, had a, a final four here, man. Because uh, if you remember, that's when was was, was was 2012, but we had it during the COVID year scheduled, but then COVID canceled it. So I want a final four back here in Atlanta again because it's so fun to have all you guys in my city and show you all around, man. And give they have how chat with you at the hotels. Well, I remember in 2012, it was awesome. It rained a little bit, but I remember because uh, uh, we had gone to the NCAA tournament at Long Beach State, and um, I talked to SMU and Colorado State about new jobs. So I was going from hotel to hotel talking to ADs and, and that kind of thing and really got a, a feel for the area. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and obviously you remember it because, uh, you know, it's, it was a pivotal time in my career, whether to stay at Long Beach State or go somewhere else. And, you know, uh, I ended up staying for 17 years at one place, and and it was uh, it's been it's been great that way. And and Atlanta and and all these cities have always a great great part to do with it when they host the Final Four. Hey, coach, for you, man, and this business, man, it's about crazy business. You know, being in one place 17 years now, uh, that's rare in this business. So, you know, some guys gonna get two years. <laughs> used yeah. to be used to get three or four. That's like two years and they're out. So. About how the business has changed and that stability of being in one place that long and be able to hopefully now this be your last job in East of Washington. Yeah, yeah, but but I, like I and I tell people it was a great you know Long Beach State uh, you know the the way that the, it ended there was not was not perfect you know I didn't like the timing of it and that kind of thing but I certainly don't dismiss you know a change after 17 years they 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 let me raise my family in one place you know my kids were little court kids at like, like your kids age, four, five, three, one, I think, you know, and uh, uh, they, they were able to to grow up in the pyramid at, at Long Beach state and uh, grow into to young adults while we were there. So you know, we, I really left with a lot of positive memories. Cause like you say, to be over 40 years in this business at three in institutions, I was at, at, um, uh, I was at uh, Gonzaga for 12 years. I was at Minnesota for, for um uh eight years and then uh, now 17 there so that's what 37 years in in three places is pretty pretty amazing uh um and fortunate career now i'm a little bit i'm, I'm two years old, older than that coach i'm 39 <laughs> <laughs> there you go you were i was just i was just getting to, to, to gonzaga when you're getting going yeah that and yeah i forgot i had two years at uab with gene bartow that's where i I go to Atlanta because I had some friends there all the time uh, when I was in Birmingham for those two years and got my master's at UAB. So uh, that's that was my one Southern living uh, two years. 100% coach. And coach, for you, um, at what point did you decide you want to get into coaching, man? Because I know like my dad's a coach, but I, I didn't have it in me. I'm more of a talker. I love to play, but I know I, 
my competitive drive, the way I talk off the air, <laughs> maybe maybe best to be a coach. Yeah. Well, that's really funny you say that because um, my dad was a coach and my dad was a head coach at uh, University of Idaho when I was going to college. And uh, and then uh, when I first got out, he was or at the end of my college or when I was in high school. And then he became the head coach at the University of Oregon and he was there for eight years. And my dad was adamant for me not to coach. And uh, so I, I got into education. I was going to be a teacher. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and I remember um, uh, taking uh, uh, an accounting class uh, in my junior year in, high, in college. And the last day of the class, they were like, okay, you can't. No, it was my sophomore year, going to be a junior. And they said, you got to go into these accounting classes. And basically, there's no turning back. I was going to be a accountant for the rest of my life. And I remember I couldn't sleep that day. And I went home to my parents for dinner on that Sunday and, and asked my, you know, and I was afraid to tell my dad because he was an intimidating old school coach, you know, that, you know, was one way or his way. And I remember, you know, just sitting there at, at Sunday dinner and, uh, uh, he was shoveling in the food. He didn't have the greatest uh, table manners. He's 91 now. I can say that he, he probably not. He's not into podcasts. So <laughs> at 91, but uh, um, uh, he just, I said, dad, I think I want to change my major. And he's like, what to, and he just keeps shoveling the food in, you know? And, and uh, I said, he said, I said, I want, I want to go into education. I think, I think I want to coach. And he still doesn't look up. He said, do you want to coach? Because, you want to coach or you want to coach because it's what I do. And I said, I can't see myself waking up every morning and not doing what I love. And basketball is what I love. I was a better football player. That's what I played in college. And, and uh, uh, he got up from the table, didn't say a word, came around and gave me a big hug and said, I just want to make sure it was what you wanted to do. That's why I never wanted to steer you to it. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think it was, I always say my dad taught me what it is to be a coach. I know there's a lot I knew going in, as you would know, if your dad was a coach, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that are not that glamorous that are ups and downs. And you really are responsible for a lot of young men's lives and in, in a very um, uh, pivotal time in their life. Um, and so a lot of responsibility to it, but I just have loved it. I've, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of the career, you know, had had some adversity at the University of Minnesota and wouldn't have traded that because it really galvanized my marriage and my family, you know, cause I had to rely on them. And so, you know, it's all been really, really blessed, really good. And coach Monson, like for, like for me, like, you know, I do some volunteer coaching now. I, I kind of touch dabble back and I always get, get away from it too. I'm not in it every day. And it makes my dad so happy uh, that I do that. Cause my dad, I was wanting to be too coach. Like you have it in you, son, you have knowledge of the game, you have the schemes, you have the thoughts, you, you have the mindset. You just have to apply yourself. My private coach is I'm very competitive, and I, and I don't want my mouth to get me in trouble when I'm when I'm competing. But being able to give back to these young kids and show them what I know has been very fun. Like it's very rewarding to me, just a, a volunteer basis to help help these young kids out and show them the game of basketball that you and I both love. Yeah, no, no question about it. And, and uh, you know, I my, one of my biggest regrets is I didn't coach my own kids growing up. I, I just felt like. I didn't want to be one of those parents that are ha so hands-on that it turns the kids off. And now I have my my youngest son playing for me, and I I didn't realize how much I was missing out uh, getting to getting to have, uh, be a part of my own children uh, when it comes to coaching. Uh, but uh, um, um, you know that's in. But I have very few regrets in coaching, and that would just be one small one. And coach, how cool is it to have your son uh, as, as the coach? And does it get difficult when mom says play him more? Does that get difficult for you? I, I tell those other kids, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, he's going to, he's going to get all the, he's going to get all the advantages uh, because uh, he, I sleep with his mom. So, you know, uh, that, that's, that's a pretty powerful thing, but, but all, all seriousness, yeah, it, it is, it is great to, you know, um, and I didn't, I saw a lot of other coaches do it. I think, I think one of the things in, in college coaching, especially with, with all the, fans that are going to weigh in and everything, they, they either got to be your best player by far, or they got to be, you know, down at the bottom where they're not in the middle, you know, the sixth, seventh man or, or, you know, even third, fourth guy, where should he be starting? Should he be where people can really question it? And, and Maddox is just a grinder. I mean, he, he came in when one game uh, at, at Long Beach state and, and won the game in overtime because three guys had fouled out and that kind of thing. But, 
Um, you know, he was a reserve. I'd probably be going to redshirt at Eastern for us next year uh, and just keep developing. But uh, it's it's just great because he loves it so much. And and to be able to want to play for his dad at, at 21 years old and still, you know, want to be around you. And I think there's a lot of parents who would do anything to keep their 21 year olds relevant in their life. And it gives us a, a, a an avenue to do that. And Coach Moss, I'm going to ask you about the, the new ages transfer portal and, and 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 how it is for you trying to being don't knowing you part of the old system how how to recruit young men and sit out a year and they don't have to sit out anymore. So for you, how has it changed your approach to recruiting and roster construction now with where the portal is and the way the way how some of the young men seem to want to just pull the rip pull when, when things get hard. Yeah, that's a, that's the most I, I think at my level you're not dealing with as much you know like uh, negotiating. Uh, money for them because at our our uh, level it's more about an opportunity to get to that next level to, for me it's developing the young man and then as you said they take off uh to a, a bigger school once you get them good enough but but you know uh we had four kids at, at long beach state last year that all went to transfer portal after i i left i was dismissed there and uh uh you know all four of them probably making more money than i am next year and uh, and that's that's really cool. You know, that's that they all were able to take advantage of that situation and, and something that, that is, uh, you know, ends up being not good for one person end up, at least they get, they're getting taken care of out of the situation. So, uh, you know, I, I think at, uh, we, we came in here and, and Eastern Washington doesn't have that kind of, uh, uh, situation where you're going to have, uh, um, a money for them. And so, you know, my first week here, we brought in five kids. We needed to, to replace a lot of, of people. And and I told all five of them, don't come here if you're looking for money. Don't come here if you're looking for great weather. Don't come here if you're looking for the, the pretty girl or whatever. I said, the only thing we have here is an opportunity. And if if uh, if you want to play Division One basketball and an opportunity to do that, we have five open starting spots. And, you know, you'll have a chance to, to come in here and, and play at a Division One school. And all five of those kids committed on their visit. So... Um, I feel like you know you're, you're, you can still compete at this level and and uh, and and still be able to to maintain, but it's tr trickle down. Just like you know the and you know I remember when when the NBA started all the pick and rolls and everybody thought it was crazy. Now that's all anybody in college does, and mm -hmm. now it trickles down to high school. The same with all the money and everything. You know, uh, it's you know it's really a relevant deal and really. Uh, for all my friends that are BCS, you know, coaches in those power five leagues or it's really a, a difficult deal. But uh, at this level right now, j just keeping them is, is is there. But but getting them, I think there's still a lot of kids out there that are still just looking for the opportunity to play Division one. And Coach Monson, I want your thoughts on, on the big sky. How has it it's improved over the years as as a mid-major conference from what Travis DeCure does in Montana, uh, Matt does it. And over in Montana State, what Eric does at Weber and all those guys are in the league, and um, my man Steve as well, and then Northern Colorado, what he does. Uh, so talk about just all that, man, how the conference has gotten better over the years and how this guy truly has high-level talent, high-level coaching, and people should watch it, boy. I know it's come off late and late at night. People should really pay attention to what's going on out there in the big sky. Well, you, I'll tell you what, you need to uh, tell me because you know the coaches in our league better than I do. You're you're rattling off guys. I'm like, man, I need to learn all these coaches' names and stuff in this league, you know. But I got great respect for the big sky. As I said, my dad was a head coach when I was in college. I went to the University of Idaho to play football, and uh, he was a basketball coach at Idaho. So that was in the big sky, and, and uh, I, I know how tough it was. I mean, his first year, I think he won – three games or five games in, in, in his whole season. And, and uh, I think it's very comparable to the league I just left. It's a big West, a lot, a lot more uh, uh, a talent, a lot, a lot better uh, basketball than I think people would realize, you know, in the South or in the East it you know, as it did with the time zone, don't get to see some of the games, but I mean, just us at, at, at uh, Long Beach last year, we went into DePaul and we won at DePaul. We went into USC and won at USC. We well, we went into Michigan and in the Big Ten and won at Michigan. And I think we're the only school in 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 the in the country last year that had true road wins. You know, in in the Big Ten, the the the, the Big East, and the, and the Pac-12. So you know, th there's good basketball played at this level. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of kids out there that can play. And and here's places like this, 
Eastern Washington or or Long Beach State gives you that opportunity and kids take advantage of it. I got two more for you, Coach, and one of them being scheduling. Uh, how tough is this non-conference scheduling coming for you guys, man, trying to get games out there, man, having to figure out these two-for-ones or MTEs, man. I know it's the hardest job you have besides recruiting and scheduling. So how's that been going for you and your staff? Well, you know, last year when we had a good team coming back at, at, at Long Beach State, I mean, like you're saying, we couldn't get games. I think we had one – one division one home game in the preseason. But when, when you, you take a job like this where Eastern has been really good, but, but as soon as David Riley announced that he um, uh, was taking the job at Washington state, they had four returning starters. They all went in a portal. So uh, people looked at that and said, okay, there, there's our, there's our easy win. So we had an easy time making a schedule. I, when I got here, when there was only one game on the schedule. They couldn't get any because of those four players all returning. And a week after I got the job, our schedule was filled up. I mean, my phone was ringing off the hook because people were like, okay, there's no way Eastern's going to be any good next year with all these guys leaving. But uh, I think we're going to have a competitive team on the floor. And we've got, uh, I think, a, a really uh, good schedule. And obviously, I've always, since my days at, at Gonzaga, been a philosophy of it's a really a true preseason and we want to just get better and play the best we can and we've got some uh uh really good bcs games on the schedule and and really um some uh, uh games that we have an opportunity to win at and uh so i'm excited about it now coach last one for you you know on the show we love talking about food, food on the show coach so for you and your staff those long hours you kept this spring uh what's the places you all hit up in the spokane Chin Chin area to find you all some good food to, to give you a fuel to get this to get this team built to get this get the schedule done. Well, I you know I my dad was a head coach at Cheney High School when 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 uh, I was born, so I lived here uh, to the fourth grade and uh, 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 and then uh, you know living at Gonzaga's campus is twenty minutes away. Um, uh, I will say I will give a shout out to Chaps is is a great breakfast place and. Coach Few and his wife Marcy had my son and I and a couple of people to dinner last night. We had dinner at Chaps for the first time. It's right kind of on the way to Cheney from Spokane. Uh, awesome place uh, that um, it was was not here uh, when I lived here before. So I'm kind of getting to new places, but I got my staples. You know, the Jack and Dan's Tavern. We got great food where John Stockton's dad used to own, and a good friend of mine, Jeff Condal, and. Um, and, and Kevin Mack own it now. So uh, it's uh, there's a lot of, lot of good spots in, in, in Spokane and Cheney to eat. So I can't single them all out. All right, Coach. Cool. Coach, I told you out there, man, it was fun to see you, Coach. You were a legend in my book, man. I was been a fan of yours. It's been an honor, man. And hope will do this again real soon, Coach. I hope to see you on live period. I'll be out and about in the live period. So I hope I catch you one of these events, man. Well, come out and send me one of those. Uh, when we see you at those events, just send me one of those Atlanta players. I like their I like their games. I sure will, Coach. I got you, buddy. All right, man. Yeah, I'm going to hold you to it. Yes, sir.